morning everyone welcome live to facebook and also on zoom so we have a link there to go on zoom if you want to join us with our small church fellowship on zoom as well as now on facebook facebook live uh, we really are a passionate to really share the gospel especially those of what um, entails us as people of god and what is for us as you know what is our heritage and today we're going to actually share to you about this topic of what is the saints healing heritage. Ang ibig sabihin po ng saints, no? saints is really what, uh, it, it is actually a term for all those who worship the Lord during those times ng the Book of Acts, where first church started in the Antioch, which is a place. no. And so, uh, you know, they're not, called Christians first. No? They are called, most of the time, even the apostles, they are called saints. Although they are, you know, positionally in the Lord, they're called sent, sent messengers, which is actually meaning apostles. All right? So here we go with our one, just one of our heritage in Christ. All right? So the saints healing heritage. Ano ba tong healing Heritage natin with the Lord. Because in Acts 10 38 is a beautiful verse, which is one of my theme, um, you know, faith verse that I memorize. And it says here, and you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Nakita niyo po ba yun? Na when the God the Father anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. That's two things that God the Father blessed Jesus as a human person servant. and then. The effect of that is he went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. But this is a secret for God was with him. All right. Dito pa lang sa verse na ito, you will understand what it is about our heritage. All right. So we have to really take note of what our spiritual heritage is and utilize them. Once you become a Christian, part of your duty is to find out what it is about your rights and your heritage. Just as much as you become citizens of any country, right? You will like to find out and benefit from the rights of being a citizen of the country. But sad to say, this is a reality that a lot have just confessed Jesus as their personal savior. But then what happened was, what happened was, um, you know, hang on a sec because something is just coming into my um, Zoom. So I'm skipping it for now. So what happens was, you know, we, we are not actually getting into what we need to get as citizens that needs to get to our rights. I'm gonna say this is really annoying. Brother OG, can you please help me? There is this thing that is just uh, hindering me to see my slides. All right. So um, again talking about talking about um, you know, our um, thing, talking about our heritage. You see, this is a very thing about we have to really take note of our heritage. What do we have in Christ? The, th the thing about this one here is that first and foremost, you have to know that God has to anoint you with the Holy Spirit and with power. It's not enough that you have the Holy Spirit. It's a second thing too. Have yourself to be in, be given that power. 
And you see, the apostles is the same thing too with their lives. Na hindi sila basta lang naging worker. They are been, have been anointed, trained by, by Jesus as disciples, and then they were anointed to do the job with the Holy Spirit and with power. So ito po ang isa sa ating mga heritage, the healing heritage. So let's now move on po. As a man, Jesus was anointed by God, by the Holy Spirit and power, then showing it forth to bring healing to all, showing God's goodness to whom he encounters. All right, so Jesus was anointed by God, by the Holy Spirit and far. That the outcome of that is to bring healing to all. Walang palya. Yung anointing na yon, yung Holy Spirit na yon, is actually a mark of a true servant or a true saint of God. That while you receive that, then the encounter of that is bringing goodness to whom you encounter. Because the same spirit that Jesus received is the same spirit that was given to us. Hindi, hindi po yun different. But the thing is, there is this thing also that the Father God on his perfect timing, he will give you that edge that you are going to have an increase in that anointing of healing, the power that you need. In the book of Acts 1.8, it was given. So, John 21, it says in the epilogue, this is where we get our scripture, right? John 21. Jesus appears to seven disciples, and this is what happened. So let's get back to the story before we even get to the point of, you know, Acts 10, 38. At dawn, Jesus appeared on the beach where disciples did not recognize. So hindi siya na-recognize ng mga disciples niya sa beach. This is the, the third time that he appeared after resurrection. Then the seven disciples went back to fishing, thinking Jesus did left for good. So kala nila after resurrection, nakita nila si Jesus umakyat, ay hindi pa pala umakyat. Nakita nila si Jesus na wawala at uh, hindi na siya nowhere to be found. But Jesus was in his resurrected body. So he goes from one place to the next without even, uh, you know, uh, having to walk. Because he's in the glorified body. So it was the all night when they didn't catch a fi any fish. You know, being a fisherman, they went back to fishing. Until Jesus told them to catch on the right side, and so it was full. So 153 large fish, and that hadn't torn. So hindi siya, yung 153 na malalaking fish na huli nila, at yung net ay hindi nabulwak. Then Jesus prepared breakfast for them, smoked fish, and some bread. Would you believe that? Even Jesus thought about not just giving them a good catch, but also prepared a meal for them. Of course, the whole night kasi they were fishing. So Jesus thought, you know, I care about these guys. These are my servants. So I'll bake them or make them food. That's how Jesus is so actually loving and caring, right? And it's the third time Jesus appeared to them after resurrection. The chapter 2, where Peter was asked, the chapter 2, where Peter was asked three times about his love for him. This is also the chapter where Peter was asked three times, do you love me? Right? And all those things that happened. Then Peter also, in this account of John 21, Peter was jealous of John. He misconstrued him as the one who will not die. Kasi meron sinabi na, tinanong siya, who is the apostle uh, you know, who will, will not die? And then nagsiselo siya kay John. And then, uh, what is that to you if I, you know, if I allow somebody to actually live long, not die? So Jesus was confronting him about that Peter has no idea of how Jesus actually is God and he knows what he's doing uh, amongst his disciples. So John was what the one who have recorded events. Now, what am I emphasizing about John 21 is because here in the scripture in John 24, John was actually mentioned here that he recorded Jesus' ministry all throughout. All right, lot ng healings, lot ng miracles niya. 
John was the one who had recorded events of Jesus' ministry and that his account is accurate. Lahat ng account ni John, the book of John, what happened to Jesus, what, what Jesus said, right? And even in the book of Revelation, he was given that mandate. So he was the one who recorded all the healing and miracles Jesus did. Walang palya, he was the one who actually recorded every healings, every miracles, okay, that Jesus did. All right, so let's me have a look again. So the biblical healing records in the Bible is number one, the Old Testament to New Testament. So um, biblical healing records in the Bible are here from Old Testament to New Testament. So the word healing appeared 250 times in the Hebrew Bible in about 214 separate verses. This is recorded by the writers Davidson, Wren, and Wilkinson. So they have come up that 250 times the word healing is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. This word is most frequently used in the book of Jeremiah 31 times, Isaiah 27 times, and Psalms 27 times also. Wilkinson recorded it. So why is it in the book of Jeremiah? Because Jeremiah is a weeping prophet. And during that time of the Israelites, where they are in exile, where they are being punished. You know, a pr prophet Jeremiah is always asking the Lord for healing. And also, the Lord mentions a lot of healing to them. Because of the stubborn Israelites who always disobey God's commands or always swerve from the Father's, uh, you know, protocols and mandates. So, because of their disobedience, it was said in the patriarchal sa life panang. You know, the Moses, that if you obey, then I will bless. But if you disobey, then I will curse. So Jeremiah has all the records of the many accounts of prayers of healings, as well as, you know, God saying that I will heal you. So yan po talagang healing is your heritage. Recorded yan. So in the Synoptic Gospels, what is the Synoptic Gospels? That is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus recorded healings is 22. He had no recorded healings. His healings are more than just mere physical healings, but more on the importance of wholeness. So Jesus, I, about not only the healing physical of the person, but actually the healing of their souls to turn to God and serve Him. So marami si Jesus na hinil, like for instance, uh, you know, the Samaritan woman, hindi lang siya nahil sa kanya issue of his, her identity, but also became an evangelist, right? Zacchaeus is the same. He got saved and then he became an evangelist. So the wholeness meaning to say that they have served God full time in their lives once the Lord brought them their desire of healing. So the New Testament apostles and disciples recorded healings are found in Matthew 10.1 and Acts 5.12. And dyan po yung account nila that they have done so many signs and wonders. Okay? What types of healing with Jesus himself during those times? So what types of healing? So kumbaga parang ano klaseng healing, ang magandang healing kung kasama mo pa si Jesus at siya pa yung so, how we all needed that your touch. Amen? So, but then again, it is our heritage for life. Minsan gusto natin sana, doon na lang ako, you know, nabuhay during Jesus' time. But then again, did not, that God did not allow that. And so, ang heritage mo is for life. Amen? Because what we have in the Lord through the Holy Spirit is a heritage for life. Heritage natin yan sa buong buhay mo. Hindi yan nawawala. Yan ay kakakakbay mo yan because of the Spirit of God that rests in you. All right? And also in the book of John, it says there that even Jesus actually pwede hindi kukulangin talaga ang record ng mga books para isulat lahat 
ng detalye ang mga healings, miracles in Jesus. Now, itong healings na to is 22 lang healings. Okay, but there are more miracles. No, there are also wonders and signs, no? Katulad ng storm that was stopped. That's not healing, but that's one of Jesus' acts of miracles. But the healing itself, Jesus made 22 accounts of it. So, the definition of healing, ano ba talaga yung healing? Ang healing is, came from the word sozo or soter, all right? So, Greek and Hebrew. To rescue or set free, release from some power or control. So, one can perform their true purpose, all right? So, ikaw ay nire-rescue at set free, hindi lang yung sasakit, but you are released from that sort of power and control ng sakit na yan. So one can perform their true purpose. See, this is what a different healing, kind of healing that Jesus is doing. Like any other medicines of science, they would only, mga medicines natin, they're only cure the symptoms, but not the wholeness. But when Jesus touches us and we understand the healing, that is brought about by the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is actually being set free totally from that sickness and that power and control so that you can amply perform your true purpose. Hinatanggal ni Lord lahat ng mga baggages, lahat ng kailangan tanggalin in one swoop of it all to rescue you so that you will become a servant to somebody that God will use and James 5.15 is this. This is what it is about the so -so. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and save the sick. It's not only about the sickness, but also the soul, statue, or a position. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So even your, the sins of man is part of healing. Because sabi nga ng Bible, some uh, infirmities are afflictions caused by one man's sin. Hindi nyo ba alam sometimes ang sakit natin ay galing yan sa kasalanan. Kasalanan ng curses ng ibang tao and also kasalanan natin mismo. So that's the reason why sometimes we have to seek the Lord or seek it out with others to pray what really, kailang meron tayong revelation really need to have a revelation of what anyone is needing of healing, not just pray for them. Because it's very important we get to the source of it. I've noticed that when I preach and, you know, and people are coming forward, when they are asking for healing or they're not asking for healing, the Lord Holy Spirit will reveal and touch actually the very root cause of that person's situation in God. So your wholeness is actually a healing that actually entails your standing with God. You standing more in the spiritual realm. Hindi lang yet what you will feel and be comforted about with your physical healing. It is actually a healing that is actually connected in the realms of the spirit and that you will be able to actually function. Okay? So, let's move on. And the, these are the scriptures, Romans 5.17, about that sozo healing. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, okay, yung, yung offense ng, ng, ni, ni Adam, o kahit sino mong offense, nagre-reign yan sa isa, much more those who receive abundance of grace, yan, and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Narinig nyo ba yun? Receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Ngayon, ang bibigay sa inyo, you will reign in life through Jesus Christ. That is talking about your fullness. Okay? Reigning in life. Ibig sabihin, you are the head and not the tail. In sinasabi doon sa Old Testament, you are not actually uh, you know, um, conquered 
by sin, by sickness. But you are actually have been reigning in life through the one Jesus Christ. Are you winning? Are you reigning? Am I asked this today? And do you have healing that you need healing from? And let us seek the Lord because the Lord will help you find what it is. Ephesians 3.20 is another thing about the wholeness, about the soul, soul healing, the complete healing. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. See, glory to God, yung power niya daw, working in us. Kaya kaya ni Lord lahat, right? More than you will ever ask or even imagine. So healing is part of your wholeness, is part of what we need to ask the Lord. Seek it out. Don't just settle for less or don't just settle that your prayers are not answered. Importante po that the prayers and your wholeness is actually happening within you as you seek the Lord. Hindi po yung paduin tayo, pababa, panakaw. You see, if that is what's happening to you, then obviously it is not from God. It is of the devil. And you need deliverance, not only just healing. All right? So let's move on. The vital biblical truths that we're going to talk about, about this healing heritage. Ano ba yung dapat ating alamin sa ating heritage na meron tayong healing? Okay, number one, kailangan natin malaman na source natin si Jesus Christ Taylor. Number two, is the recipients, the saints of God, kayo yan at ako. Then the efficacy of healing, paano ito magwawagi sa buhay mo at sa akin at mananatiling ikaw ay continuously being healed, whole, being made whole in Christ. And then, ano ba yung heritage call of duty? It is not only for you to be healed. Okay, in Jesus' account, when you received the Holy Spirit and God anointed, then he was able to do all those miraculous things where the people are oppressed. You see, some Christians does not understand that they think, you know, that it's all only all for the few. Nothing that you realize, not realizing that, you too have the means and the edge where even the disciples also have been trained by Jesus to do the same. That's what he's doing. So never leave out yourself and never be lied to by Satan that you cannot actually pray for someone for healing and they will get healed. All right? Because that's part of your heritage. Kaya manan mo yan. So wag nang wag mo yan. Basta ikoklose sa buhay mo because that is part of who you are. If Jesus trained the disciples, you also can pray for healing for others to do the same. Okay? Now watch in John 21, which actually we have talked about. Remember the chapter 21? What we talked about, John was recorded everything. Jesus did many other things. This is what says in John 21, 25. If they were all written down, watch this, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that would be written. So in buong mundo right now or then, okay, could not even have the capacity to record Jesus of healing ministries or miracle ministries. Napakarami po niyang record ng kanyang ministry kay Jesus. Alright? So, ito po ang ating uh, you know, ating um, ating topic. Now, if Jesus did many other things of healing, then na hindi contain then why not his people of God avail of the healing that Jesus can do for us. Three and a half years siya ay ginamit ang Panginoon for the healing of many. And how about, how about us Christians? We're just accustomed to just sleep, work, and sleep, and earn. So yun lang po parati eh. You know, we are, we are actually consumed of the world and for the world. Why? We have a much better heritage that will not only benefit us, but also benefit others as well. 
Yeah, you know, when I was walking in this, in this, uh, you know, Holy Spirit move, you know, and train in the Holy Spirit by the word, uh, you know, I, I, I was given that courage to really go out on my way and take out to me. And true enough, the Holy Spirit was with me and touches. And I've seen how extensively and expansively he's actually reaching out to many. Because whatever he has anointed, Jesus of Nazareth, my Father God, has also anointed us and will anoint us with the same spirit and fire. See, Jesus na yun na nasa sa second heaven, and that the second heaven, and sec, at the seated at the right hand of the Father. In the third heaven, not second heaven, but he's got the power over the second heaven, of course, because he's high above the second heaven, uh, which all the principalities of the demons are, right? And they are subject to Jesus. And so healing with Jesus is always at bay for us and always ready for us to avail of. Okay? So, wag kayo mag atubili parati for healing. Okay? Don't go straight to the doctors or straight to the medicines unless you talk to first to Jesus and ask, Lord, why am I sick? Is there something wrong with me? Is there anyone who cursed me? Is there anyone? You see, spiritual matters are being sought through the spirit and also through the word. Don't just go first. Unless you're in an emergency, yes, fine. Go straight there. But pray in the middle of the emergency because God actually speaks and knows what is our healing uh, solutions of problems. So the source of healing is Jesus Christ, the healer. Okay? Number one, muna pag natin yung biblical truths is the vital biblical truths of heritage of healing is this. Ang source ng healing nating lahat is Jesus Christ, the healer. Now, he was called, of course, part of the Trinity, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. And that verse, with this kind of uh, name of God, is found in Exodus 15.26. Also, he was prophesied to be our healer. It says, by his stripes, we are healed, but we'll see that in those scriptures. And then partaking communion is another declaration of healing. That's why Jesus said, take it as much as you should in remembrance of me. In remembrance that I gave you my blood and my body, and it was given for your healing, salvation, and also healing. And then Matthew 8, 17, it says, he himself took our infirmities, and bore our sicknesses. You see, when we are sick, he will take our infirmities if we let him. And he will bear all our sicknesses. We'll find out what this infirmity means later on. And then goes Matthew 9.35. It is a record that when he goes out and preach the kingdom of God, then there is a demonstration of the power of God not just in the preaching, but also a demonstration of what he has in the Lord, a mandate. Ang sabi ng records sa Matthew 9.35, he healing every disease and sickness. Saan ka papupunta ang source mo na kay Jesus na nag-heal ang lahat at hinil ang lahat? Wala siyang humpay, maliit, malaking sickness, leprosy, you know, anything else, you know, yung mga identity nila, they are all healed and made whole by Jesus' touch. Matthew 4, 23, healing every kind of disease or sickness. It's the same record on a different account, on a different kind of place where he actually have, you know, shared the, the, the gospel as well as then healing takes place. So Jehovah Rapha comes from the two words Haba and Rapha, mean, meaning to meaning to say that it is the existing one who heals. So you have a is existent one, and then Rafa is healed. So altogether, the Lord, the one who exists, the only one who exists is the one who heals. So Jehovah, the existing one, Rafa, to restore or to heal. 
So Jehovah is a great physician who heals the physical and emotional needs of his people. Si akala natin si Lord, you know, walang care. Really, he does care because his name is healing. Okay? Kaya lang, nauna sa atin ang gamot, ang mas hospital, doktor. Okay? Not that we negate these people because God gave them also wisdom. Right? Gave them wisdom to heal. But more so, we can also tap in the very miracle that Jesus can give us. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, our problems for a long time can be actually dealt with and then listen to what God's instructions. So Exodus 15, 26 is that. Isaiah 61 is also that. Let's look at those scriptures. Exodus 15, 26, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right, this is a secret in his eyes. If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, watch this, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord. Heals you. Right? So, meron si Lord na nagbibigay siya ng diseases. I will not bring it on those who are rebellious against him. Siya yung nagbibigay dito. At the same time, is, it, is God bad that he brings diseases, diseases on the Egyptians? No, because that is his enemies. He is just protecting the Israelites from the attacks of these enemies of God against God's people. So, you know, bringing diseases, sometimes God will do that if you are keeping yourself righteous before God. May mga tao talaga kumakalaban sa inyo. Iba nga namamatay pa eh. Let's see, we've seen that. Or nakakaroon disease. But that is not your fault. That is the Lord's judgment. But we cannot alter or even change because he is God. Sabi niya, for I am the Lord who heals you. So God is for you. If the Lord promised this to the Israelites, you are the 21st century Gentiles that also can share with the blessings of the Hebrews of Israelites. Isaiah 53, 5, it says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for iniquities. This is a record of what has been done during his crucifixion. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Sabi nga ng ibang mga scholars, biblical scholars, all of the things that that's actually the account of those lashes, the crown of thorns, they are but a uh, symbol of the parts of our bodies that needs healing. The crown of thorns is about our mental, physical, psychological problems in the mind, right? The, the, the lashes, the, the, thir the 37, you know, thorns that is in each of those lash, right, is actually an account of different uh, sickness that we all have, the different kinds. So it was all because of God's love to Christ Jesus that everything really has happened for our healing. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 30. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, right? That's why it's very important that only saints who accept Jesus Christ will actually partake of the communion. Will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. They can never, you know, just, just misuse that. Even in the Old Testament, when people will just rush in to go to the, you know, the holy place, holy of holies, they can't. When they're not allowed there, they die inside the holy of holies. Straight away, dead. Okay, so anything that is about our heritage, our spiritual heritage, actually is very serious thing. That's why we, we cannot just be taking it lightly. Not ang binibigay ni Lord sa'yo, precious yan. Okay? And part of your heritage of healing, it's also precious. Now you cannot just share that to anybody but yourself because it's only given to the saints of God. And it says is that a person examine himself. That's why we need to spend some time of, you know, asking the Lord before we partake of it. And so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, Ni mo na di-discern kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng 
the Lord's body was bruised for you, drinks, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That, why, that is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. Because, you know, the communion is for our healing. It's not going to be taken lightly. When we partake of it, we really have to ask God for our sins to be repented of and confessed. Okay? Because that is the very reason why some of us, I mean, that's why many of you are weak, weak in the spirit, and also ill. And some have died. Because you have not known what it is to take the communion worthily. Somehow, like, you take a communion, pero ka meron kang meron ka sa banan loob or offense sa kapwa mo. Get rid of all those things that actually is not good for you because you will remain to be sick unless you partake of the body and the cup of the Lord, right? One of which is for your healing. Next, Isaiah 61.1. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. This is what claim of Jesus and even also the claim of Isaiah. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom from the captives, release from darkness for the prisoners. These are accounts of healing that will take place in people's lives. And what it says here, the most important thing is, the spirit of the Lord is on me. And then anointed me. So one is, he is right there with you. The second one is, is going to anoint you to do his healing or his job, which are also entailed here in Isaiah 61, verse 1. So now let's go to the second vital truth, is the recipients are the saints, you and myself. We are healed. This is what it says first, because there's two things that we have to understand as being recipients as saints. We are healed and continue to be healed. Huwag niyong iisipin na porky kayo ay na-heal once, wala ka ng healing that will take place. Example, why, why do we need to be continually be healed? We are in this fallen world. All right? It's not enough na me too, I have to take care of my na COVID ako, na COVID ako. But I need also to ask for healing most of the time. Because somehow I, I get sick, like sipon, you know, and also, you know, pag merong maraming pollution, I get some tiredness and also, because we are in this fallen world. This world is not our home. Really. This is not the world that Jesus actually prepared for us. This is where the world of Satan has been erected and you can yung manipulation on us too that we get sick, right? That's why yung COVID yan, manipulation ng enemy yan. All right, so he saved us, you know, unang nangyari sa atin, healed us from the power of death and its curses. Number one muna is we are saved from the powers of death and its curses of Satan. And then second account of our healing is the presence of Jesus through the spirit working for our fullness. Now, when, when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of God was in us. And it starts working in us, right? Yung body, mind, soul, and spirit. It starts to unravel things to us for our healing and then connects that to the word of the spirit, which is in the Bible. And then let us pray about the healing. So, meron ka problema? Here's the word of God. The Holy Spirit breathe that. And then you actually declare. That's why declaration is part of CHF prayer. Right? Allow me to declare you what is your uh, promise from God through the word. So not just meant to actually just attend and save. Right? Meron kang gagawin in your daily life to actually ask God daily, Lord, why am I sick? Don't accept sickness when it comes. You need to seek that out with God because there is a continuous root cause of your problems. Somehow, you know, the enemy blinds us to the spiritual things about curses and witchcraft and all of those things. We are not immune into that. We will experience that because we are the enemies of the enemy and their cohorts because we transferred from God. 
Yes, God will protect us always, but God wants us to be wise, to know how we can work with him and also apply his words. So here in 8, Romans 8, 1, 2, watch this. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, watch this. The power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So somehow, when you are been born again, you've got this life-giving spirit right there inside of you with the power of sin that leads to death. So big sabihin nun, meron kang healing after healing. Hindi ka mamamatay. All right? Unless alang it's the sovereign will of God that really, you know, wala tayong alam sa buhay mo, why it is shortened. Because somehow nakakaroon ng premature death din ang Christian because of what? Sin. Right? But if you're a person who always seeks God and declares this, no sin, no power of sin will actually lead you to death. Why? Because there's no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus. Okay? Sin, the power of sin with its sickness can be dealt with by the power of the life-giving spirit inside of you and mine. So tayo yung recipient. So number one, we are healed and continue to be healed. Kaya hindi pa pwede sa Christians yung tinatanggap na lang parati yung sickness eh. Kailangan we really have to work with God, Lord. What do you, what is the very reason why am I sick? Like for instance, I had the I had the privilege of praying with someone in the hospital for far too long, right? Alam niyo naman ang hospital dyan sa Pilipinas ay napakamahal, right? But then again, when I was praying for her and counseling her and asking her, it dawned on me that she has a problem since pa noong 1990s. It just came out of her mouth. And lo and behold, that gives me a thing to actually pray against and ask for forgiveness on her behalf. See, sometimes you are not conscious of why you are sick and getting sicker more. It is because you need to seek God while you are sick. There are sickness that is caused by a psychosomatic, you know, psychosomatic illness. Things that actually the mind is actually controlled by the enemy, and we took it on our part to just say, yes, this is the saddest moment, and I regret that it didn't happen or it has happened. See, sometimes we cover, we cover, we actually accept, absorb what is being brought to us. If you don't have discernment, you will just accept it. But if you have discernment and you keep on fighting for your privilege and rights of the kingdom, then you will absolutely know what to do on every given situation. You see, that is what is the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit within us. We're no longer bound to the power of sin. We are no longer condemned even to that sin. So what we have to do is to confess it. Let these people confess. Let these people be, you know, get right with God. And the power of sin will just leave. And the, the death even, the death sentence will also leave. So they will have the soul, so healing, the God kind of healing, the living that we're supposed to be living in God. Okay? The reigning in life, uh, you know, living. So the infirmity, pinagsabi natin, he was bruised for our infirmities. Ano ba infirmity? Galing yung sa word the infirmity, which is the old French means, watch this, illness. These are the things that Jesus died for you. Sickness, disease, moral weakness. Would you believe that? If you have some moral issues, you can be healed by Jesus, all right? He's already said that. He was bruised for our iniquities, bruised for our infirmities. Affliction, ailment, deficiency, sa kakulang. May kulang ka ba sa iyong buhay? <coughs> sa soul, mind, and spirit? Frailty, yung hindi mo kaya. Ill health, na matagal na matagal mo ng hawak. And imperfection. These are the things that is about what Jesus took place on the cross for you and I. And you are healed and continue to be healed. Do not think of what other people 
have done to you most of the time, but think of what Jesus has done for you and get the Holy Spirit to speak to you what it is about what is happening with your ill health, moral weakness. Sino ba yung kumukonquer sa iyo? A lot of Christians are actually somehow in moral weakness. They don't even know that they're being conquered by an evil desire in their hearts, that they're doing absolutely appalling, unbelievable sins against even the body, against their families, against their wives. These are demons. These are moral weakness. These are infirmities that Jesus can heal you out. But the thing is, you're not actually connecting to the life-giving spirit inside of you. We are somehow lazy to seek. We just let the pulpit, the pastor, or anybody else to speak to us. Yes, it's good because you are weak, but somehow we have to continue to seek your healing and prepare ourselves to healing. Because when he comes, he wants us to, you know, he wants us to actually be prepared as the bridegroom, as a bridegroom to the bride, whose lamps are lit with the spirit of God on fire with the oil. Okay? Hindi yung walang oil. Empty ka na. Almost dead ka na nga sa, sa iyong ano eh, Christian life eh. Wala nang nangyayaring raining eh. Pababa ka ng pababa. Wow. That, you should cry for that kind of situation and your soul. Cry for your soul because your soul is at stake when something happens like that. That you're not actually increasing in health and in power and in glory. We have to cry out. Because somehow there's a condition in the soul that needs addressing of the Holy Spirit and the Word. Go to a healing and deliverance sessions. You know, say Chef is actually offering that. And we are right here to actually pray with you and exactly know what God wants to actually get it right with Him. Because the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will reveal. Amen. So that is about your infirmity, all of our infirmities. We are healed. And we are continue to be healed by Jesus. So we are also called to heal. This is, again, this is something that is, you know, one of the controversial uh, thing about the evangelicals and the Pentecostals and the apostolic. You see, we are called actually to heal. Where do we get the proof of that we are called to heal? Now, let's watch this. Jesus gave authority to his New Testament disciples. They're only followers lang, trainees in the kingdom to heal. That's recorded in Matthew 10.1 as well as in 9.1. So Jesus and the kingdom to heal. Trainees pa lang sila doon, right? Hey, Jesus, while he was alive. And then it was passed to us, 21st century disciples is the same given call and authority. It was found in Luke 10.19. So it's not only served during that era of the disciples and apostles. It is also given to us right now. There is a call to heal. That's the reason why we go from the growth, personal growth, infants to maturity, then become able servants, eldership. So then we can actually function all the things that God wants us to do with the body. And one of which is there is a calling to heal. Right, Matthew 10, 1, and calling his 12 disciples today, Jesus gave them authority over unclean spirits so that they could drive them out and heal every disease and sickness. Would you believe that? These are only disciples then. Wala pa silang apostleship. It only happened in the book of Acts. But while they are still learners or followers, trainees in the kingdom, Jesus gave them authority, that's the key, to actually do the ministry or the job to even heal and drive out demons. Do you believe this in your heart? There's another scripture that talks about for those who believe God gave them authority to heal for only those who believe. So, Kuika, what do you want? Will you be able to be, have this edge that you are called to heal? This is part of your heritage, by the way. Or would you like to just receive bits of healing? I would like to be called to be healed, to heal, you know, not only to be healed, but also to heal. Because, you know, if you are in the premises of your family and one of your members is sick, 
that you are there and you know this, it's the truth about you, that Jesus will give you authority to actually heal someone, some loved one. All right? So don't get into this marami mo nang go find me and all that if you're not actually praying first of what it is about the source of the sickness and the infirmity. And you are not actually targeting the very root cause by the revelation and the discernment that the Holy Spirit can bring. Then you're absolutely just touching the symptoms of it. So we have to really seek God out. Okay? And the authority that actually has a mandate for you to heal. Okay? The Holy Spirit will help you heal someone. All right. So here are your scriptures. Now many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles. Now this one here is a full-time job that they're going to be having the authority to heal. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest there to join them. Ayon ng iba kung join sa kanila. So sila-sila lang mga apostles na tinray ni Jesus ang nakakasama-sama. Kasi nakakatakot yung mga ginagawa nila. Eh. Eh, they, they cast out demons and they heal people's sicknesses. Yet more than even believers were added to the Lord. Marami naman ang add, but men and women. So that, that they even carried out the sick into the streets. Yung mga believers, nilalagay nila sa street yung mga uh, sickness, sick na tao, and laid them on cots and mats. So mga pilaya, mga merong niya, kung ano-ano during that time. And then watch this. In order that Peter's shadow, shadow lang, might fall on some of them as he came by. Would you believe an ordinary man of God who is became a full-time, has a mandate of God with his authority, full power, after Acts 1.8, they just his shadow, people got healed. A great number of people who also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, not only on that place, wherever they go, healing is taking place. So, my friends, brothers and sisters, you're not only going to be healed by God, but you are called to heal. Bring the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits and watch the word. They were all healed. Remember how Jesus mentioned also uh, about that, you know, he's a record that all many have been cured. It's the same thing. These apostles, those who were sick, who came by to them actually were all cured, right? Same testimony lang po yan. So if the Holy Spirit is really has dawned on you and given you this edge, there's no other thing but for you to actually be effective also in your heritage of healing, amen, and for others. So Luke 9, 1 to 5, one day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast all demons and to heal all diseases. All right? Walang, walang hindi sila na heal during the time of Jesus. They healed all. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And sabi dito, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Right? When Jesus gives you the authority and the power, no part of the enemy can actually come to invade or harm you. No one, nothing shall be able by any means to harm you. Amen? So be threat, but you will not be harmed. Because Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the back of the, the host of angels' armies will always be there. To keep you safe. Amen? So, now, ano yung efficacy ng ating heritage? Paano ito magiging effective? So somehow, we do it, but then hindi effective. Okay, let's watch. Number one is, this is Jesus' protocols, the presence or absence of faith. Kailangan lahat ng ginagawa mo, all of the things that you do is actually accompanied by faith. Pag walang faith, wag mo nang gawin because it doesn't, will not work. Even Jesus himself, was actually disappointed and he never worked there anymore. He left the city because he cannot discern faith amongst the people. It's really dead, cold city. 
not wanting him to come to him. So somehow we have to not waste time to those people who are not actually, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, welcoming you. Somehow you just leave them in their own demise and just let God be God in their lives. Because you came for a good reason to heal, to actually, you know, let Jesus be introduced to their lives, but you just actually felt the coldness and the uninvited welcome spirit. Okay. And for that, don't waste your faith because it will not work because they were already closed the doors in their hearts. The second one is the purpose of the Heavenly Father. You will not just do things because you want to do things. You need to ask the Father because Jesus, every single day, prays to the Father, what is your agenda, Father? And I will only do what you will command me. So here's a scripture about what I've talked to you about the faith that needs to be present there. Jesus work on each of those who have been healed and the effect of healing takes place or has taken place is because of the faith also, not only of his faith, but the faith of the person that is being, uh, you know, catered to healing. They also have their faith. So here, when Jesus is finished, his parables, he moved on from there. From one place, he goes to the next. Coming to his hometown, Nazareth, he began teaching the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and this miraculous powers? They asked, isn't this the carpenter's son? Yan ang pagkakaitin nila kay Jesus only sa Nazareth. Carpenter's son, Joseph's son. Okay? Isn't his mother's name Mary? Okay? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? So here it comes. Jesus went there, but back then. Okay, at 33 years old, 30 years old, and taught again in the synagogues because now he can teach. Because now he can demonstrate what was in the scriptures about him. But then all of those people who have been, you know, common in understanding, not having a revelation from the Holy Spirit, and just thinking normal about how the way people see him, he never did actually get to the point of healing there and doing more miracles there. He left this city, Nazareth. It's so sad that this was his city, but he was actually confined by what people's identities thought about him when he was young. Never did they understand that when a person grows with the Lord, and the person was given a mandate from God. They're no longer the Annie or the Jesus or even whoever that, that is you before prior to your. There should be a difference of who you are becoming a daughter and a, a, and a son of Jesus to becoming just an ordinary whatever person you are right now. Nakilala ka dun sa environment mo. Anak ka ng doktor ng ganito. No. Those things that doesn't matter as you begin the journey with only who Christ is and being him as your head. So Jesus' way of things in life is of the faith. And if not for faith, we will not do it. All right? So Mark 6, 5, 6, and he could do no miracle there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Pero mo yon, hindi siya makapaggawa now all can be healed only for a few that he lay hands to and and you see sometimes it's not jesus that doesn't want to heal you it's somehow our faith that does not connect in him that we didn't get it okay and he wondered at their unbelief wala silang pagtitiwala kay jesus and he was going around the villages teaching but nevertheless he leaves one place and goes to the next finds a perfect, like for instance, you know, when I went to the Philippines, I found the church that really is hungry of God. And what did God do? All of them have been touched. All of them have been revived. You see, there is a place and a fellowship that, you know, that um, you can be part of. And also people that you, you can be, your destiny helps. If not for these people, you know, mag ka lang ng panahon. But for those who have been called by God, you need to create, you need to be in faith with the Lord. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed. 
And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Why, why is this verse right here? Because this leprous man believed that Jesus can heal him. And he says, he asked him, are you willing, Lord, to heal me? And then Jesus said, I'm willing. So what is that, uh, you know, I think about this leprous man to Jesus? They connect in their faith. Jesus was willing in faith to heal him. And he was willing to receive that healing that will come with Jesus. You see, we, we understand that some people are really not into healing. But, you know, that's fine. But we will never waste our time to actually touch people, especially if their faith is not around. So that's one of the protocols. You have to sense the absence or the presence of faith. That's Jesus' protocol, and so we must follow. Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. This is about the purpose of the father now. But what he sees the father do, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Don't be this person who just because God gave you the healing heritage, you just zoom out in healing, 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 healing. Somehow there are people that, you know, somehow you have to sense in the spirit that if not allowed by the father, don't go. Because we, we are not actually going to just waste what is precious and also what is not really in within the borders, the premises of God's will. Because God's will always is protection for you and I. So we really need to listen to the Holy Spirit, right? Don't just go be, you know, be, be dictated by, you know, by, by, by the belongs whispers of many. Na hindi pala yun dapat mong gawin sa isang taong to. Kahit na push ka, wait on the Lord, pray about it, because you need to seek the Father's will. Okay, overall, we saints have this great heritage of healing through our Lord Christ. We must avail of it anytime healing on anything is needed. And as well as anybody needed healing too. So anytime you can avail of healing, right? And also for others. We are healed. And we are called to heal too by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in us. Alam ng Holy Spirit, you will hear that, lay hands, speak this, and then they will heal, be healed. We must also forget it only works through faith and by the will of the Father. This is an overall summary of what we have studied today. And I hope that you understand that saints of God have this healing heritage. You're not only bound to go see doctors. The first thing you have to do is know that you are absolutely have the right to uh, gain access to healing after healing in your bodies. That's what we have understood for myself. My family have understood that. And so we, it is actually a tradition, a Christian tradition of us. That when everyone is sick, we just call out to each other and we pray together that's number one and then if god wants us to go to go to the doctors and be hospitalized then so be it god will still be there to actually heal us because there are scriptures too that says even in our sick bed god will be with us so better time time of healing right we cannot really just dictate to god what is our you know sabi mo, healing ganto. some people can actually snap out of that Truth na may healing tayo, yes, but again, in the purpose of the Father. Because our sovereignty, sovereign will of God is very important for us to respect and wait on the Lord. So our healing heritage is eternal. Hindi po yan magtatapos. Yan po ay hanggang tayo ay pumunta na sa with Jesus Christ when He calls us because that is where all works ceased. Doon po sa langit ay reward na what we do here on earth. For people to be healed, what have what Jesus has done in your healing, what have you done with that? So yun po ang ating magiging uh, you know, account when we get to heaven about healing. But our healing heritage is eternal. Hanggang pagtulo ng pagdating ni Jesus, we can avail of that and also get to the gift of healing the Holy Spirit gives that and also his empowerment for you to heal and cast out demons. Okay? Set captives free. 
Because what you receive in Jesus is the same anointing that you receive from the Father. Amen. And he gave that to all of us. Amen. So God bless you. And I hope that you understand now, as saints, you have the healing heritage of God. Do it now for your sake, salvation and healing, and also for the healing of your families and the healing of the world. Amen. So let's just pray. Father, I thank you for this morning about our healing heritage. That, Lord, we can avail and it's free for us to get and to tap into our healing in our bodies, mind, soul, and spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, that you will pour out your grace, even now, Lord, and your anointing to even heal through this medium and this platform. That, Lord, that who are listening right now and asking for healing. For their bodies, in their souls, mind, soul, and emotions. Psychological, Lord, healing in Jesus' name. Lord, that your transference of healing will take place on their lives right now as I pray over this Zoom meeting, over this medium of social media. Lord, that you will touch them right now. Lord. That your virtue of healing takes place in each and every one of us. And we also are reminded of our loved ones and friends who need healing too, God. Lord, I pray that you'll be with them. Lord, I pray that you will heal them. Lord, I pray for your people that when they lay hands on the sick, they will recover too. I thank you, Father God, for the healing heritage that you gave all of your people, your saints in the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord. And we give you back all the glory and all the honor and the praise. And may the love of the Father, his perfect love, steadfast love, remains in all of us. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit that is sweet, powerful, and anointed in the name of Jesus Christ and the love, grace, and mercy of our Lord be upon all of us saints and to the whole world now and even forevermore until Christ our Lord comes in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let it be so. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, wherever you are, agree with me now. Amen and amen. Praise amen. God. Praise the Lord for this time. And God bless you. This is now Sister Annie Regalisa signing off from Crisis the Head Fellowship. Salamat po sa inyong pagtangkilik sa aming fellowship today. May you be blessed with the message that Jesus has brought to all of us through the Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. Bye.